Hi students, welcome to the session on a uniform linear array. This is a very very important topic. So let us start this topic now. Okay, so first we must understand what is uniform linear array. Right? So first I define the term linear. When array is said to be linear, array is said to be linear if the individual elements of the array if the individual elements of the array are spaced of the array are spaced equally that is very important word equally along the line then we can call the array is linear array, right? That means individual antenna should be kept at equally a equal space along the line. Here you see uh, we have a n element array. So element one is kept here. This is element two, element three, element four up to it is going to n. All the elements are kept at a distance of d. Every the the space between the two element is d that's what d d d here d like that okay so it is a linear array then the word uniform comes into picture what when a array is said to be a uniform array a array is said to be a uniform array if all these elements if array elements are fed with if array elements are fed with are fed with current of equal amplitude right and having and having a, a uniform progressive phase shift uniform progressive phase shift along the line right so this is very very important right first point we know if array elements are fed with equal amount of current the current having equal amplitude and uh, another term is and they should have an uniform progressive phase shift right so what is the meaning of progressive phase shift we see here here i have this word phase shift right so ps phase shift right first one there is no phase shift second one is having a phase of alpha with respect to first one right the phase difference between the two adjacent element is same you see what is the difference between the phase difference between element one and two element two has a phase of alpha element one has a phase of zero so phase difference is alpha what is the phase difference between element two and three element three has a phase of two alpha element two has a phase of alpha the phase difference is again alpha okay so the phase difference between any two elements is alpha that is same okay so this quantity is called the progressive phase shift right so the progressive phase shift symbol i am going to use in this class is alpha so alpha is progressive phase shift okay fine right so what is the phase of nth uh, nth element uh, phase of first element is zero second element is alpha so phase of nth element is n minus one alpha so no that's very important right first element phase is zero second element phase is one alpha third element phase is two alpha fourth element phase is three alpha nth element phase is n minus one alpha right so these things we must remember with respect to 
structure of the uniform linear array. Now we study the array in depth, right? Okay, we assume that we have a n number of elements or antenna in the array. The first thing is the array, the uniform linear array we have taken, right? As n be the number of elements in the array. Okay, so the first thing. Second thing, what we must know the term D. D is the space between two elements. Fine, that I explained already. Right? So, we have to find uh, the field at point P due to these elements. Right? We have n element array 1, 2, 3, up to n elements are here. I want to find field at this point P. So, P is the observation point where field is observed. Okay, so what is the distance between the first element and P R1, second element and P R2, like that you can mention everything. Okay, so now we will go for derivation, right, this is the structural uh, details, right, okay, uh, so the field of antenna 1, the field of the field of antenna 1 is right so e1 e power j 0 right first one as a how what is the general format e1 e power j psi first one as a phase of 0 so i put e power j 0 right field of antenna 2 is e1 e power j psi right so similarly field of antenna 3 is uh, e1 that is e1 is the maximum value like that we assume e1 e power j 2 psi we know right okay similarly for uh, the field of antenna nth antenna is e1 e power j n minus 1 psi okay so what is the total field er the resultant field er is sum of all the values right so e1 is common among all the things i sum it up e power j 0 is 1 e power j psi e power j 2 psi up to e power j n minus 1 psi right so we have already known about what is psi psi is a, what you called right psi is we know that b by psi is equal to bd cos theta plus alpha right where alpha is progressive phase shift Right, so it is a total phase shift, right? Psi is total phase shift, uh, beta d cos theta. This is phase shift due to path, uh, sorry. Uh, yes, this is base shift uh, generated due to path. It is phase, electrical phase. Alpha is a electrical phase. This and all we know already, right? Okay, so next thing is what we are going to do is let us assume this is equation number one, right? Multiply equation 1, this is a geometry progression, you see it is a geometrical progression, GP. Fine, so what we are going to do, multiplying uh, both sides of equation number 1 by e power j psi. So what will happen, e r e power j psi, right, into e1. First year it will be e power j 0 1, 1 into e power j psi, e power j psi, e power j psi into e power j psi, e power j 2 psi, e power j n minus 1, it will become e power j n psi. Right, I multiply both the sides of 1 by e power j psi, left hand side. Right hand side, what I did, e power j psi, I bring inside. So e power j is 1, 1 into e power j psi e power j psi into e power j psi e power j psi 2 psi like that uh, I am doing this. So it is right 1 multiplied by 
we power j psi okay we'll give this one okay fine so what we are going to do so now we are going to subtract uh, two uh, one from two two minus one it will give what do you call e power e r left hand side you see e r j psi left top side e r j psi only so e r fine here e r j psi here e r only so e r common if i take e r common outside e power j psi minus 1 similarly if you subtract subtract right hand side what will happen it will be like uh, e1 e power j n psi minus 1 why see e power j psi 2 e, here e power j n, minus, n plus uh, n psi before that what it will be e power j n minus 1 psi fine okay if you subtract uh, everything what will happen this e power j psi it will be cancelled this will be cancelled up to e power j n minus 1 psi will be cancelled so 2 minus 1 means e power j n psi will be here 1 will be here so e power n j n psi minus 1 okay fine now if you simplify this e r by e 1 is equal to e power j n psi minus 1 e power j psi minus 1 okay e r by e 1 now we normalize uh, we take the magnitude it's uh, right so take both sides magnitude so e r by e 1 that magnitude we call as e right so this is normalized right say so it is total divided by maximum so e1 is a maximum right that we know so it is in a net uh, er is a result in the electric field e1 is a maximum value so anything by maximum is normalized i told no so if you have any doubt please refer other videos on normalization process right if you divide electric field by maximum value of electric field then it is called normalization here you see what is the maximum value of electric field from all this equation we know it is e1 fine so e1 is the maximum so when you divide electric field net electric field by maximum it is called normalized so you write e n also no problem right so it will be equal to e power j n psi minus 1 divided by e power j psi minus 1 okay fine what is e power j psi minus 1 that we can write as cos psi plus j psi minus 1 if i want to take magnitude of e power j psi minus 1 what is real power square cos psi minus 1 square these two are real part this is imaginary part square sin squared psi okay so what will happen it will be equal to 1 plus cos squared psi minus 2 cos psi plus sin squared psi cos squared plus sin squared 1 okay so 2 e minus 2 cos psi so 2 i take it outside 1 minus cos psi fine so e power j psi minus 1 right so let us deal e power j psi minus 1 equal to root 2 into 1 minus cos psi right so next what i will do we can write root 2 1 minus cos psi is equal to uh, sin squared psi by 2 right okay on sin squared psi by 2 
Yes, of course, we can change it here. Mm -hmm. I can simplify this into what you call two into sine psi by two, right? So this is what my uh, what do you call left hand side? Uh, sorry, denominator, right? E power j psi minus one, right? If you simplify root of one minus cos s pi, right? So we know how to simplify one minus cos so cos psi. So it will give if you simplify all the things, what you get is two psi by two, two sine psi by two, right? Similarly, for e power j n psi minus 1 we will get 2 sine n psi by 2 right here e power j psi minus 1 2 sine psi by 2 e power j n psi is 2 sine n psi by 2 right why I am finding all the things I want to simplify this e power j n psi minus 1 e power j psi minus 1 so we got both Right now, what is my normalized electric field? E normalized equal to this is what numerator 2 sines n psi by 2 divided by 2 sine n psi by 2 is 2 2 cancel. So it will be sine n psi by 2 divided by sine psi by 2. This is what normalized radiation pattern of uniform linear array right so normalized electric field of uniform linear array right so this we must know so where we are using this what is the advantage of this uniform linear array is right they produce narrow radiation beam that is so highly directive so if you want to have a highly directional radiation beam right we go for uniform linear array right where we are using this it is mainly used in point-to-point uh, -point communication point-to-point -point communication at high frequency there we can go for what you call uniform linear array and uh, they are used in high resolution or radar also used in high resolution radar also okay so those things we must know right so this is the formula right so don't forget this this we will analyze in depth in one more video what is the in interpretation of this formula and all right I hope understand the concept. If you have any doubt, please ask me in comment section. I will clarify all your doubts. Thank you.